Have you ever wondered why turtles have shells? Or how they survive cold winters? Or how old they can actually get? Since the dawn of humanity, turtles have captured a special place in our hearts. From folklore to video games, we have a genuine fascination with these unusual reptiles. Yet, even though they are not rare or reclusive, they have their own share of mysteries. Let's discover the truth behind these shelled slowpokes. I want a teddy. First off, what is the shell all about? Sure, it's good for defense, but can turtles just take it off like clothes? Definitely not. Their shells are a part of their bodies, and their vertebrae and other bones are fused to them. The top part of the shell is called the carapace, and the bottom part of the shell is called the plastron. The scales covering the shell are called scutes, and they are made of keratin. Keratin is the same substance that makes up your hair and fingernails. Not every turtle has a hard outer shell with scutes. Soft shell turtles have pliable, leathery shells that help them move faster in both the water and on land. In fact, these special shells allow them to move much faster on land than turtles with hard shells. But believe it or not, turtles didn't always have shells. In the Middle Triassic period, 240 million years ago, turtles evolved alongside the first dinosaurs. Their ancestors were basically naked, and they looked more like lizards than turtles. But over time, their ribs developed into bony plates and by the end of the Triassic, they took on the forms we know today. In the Jurassic period, turtles split into two groups, Cryptodira, the hidden neck turtles, and Pleurodira, the side necked turtles. Hidden neck turtles retract their necks backward into their shells, while side neck turtles retract their necks sideways. Most living turtles including giant tortoises and sea turtles, are hidden neck turtles, while side neck turtles are restricted to freshwater habitats in the southern hemisphere. Between the Jurassic and now, many truly titanic turtles have come and gone. Two of the most noteworthy were Archelon and Stupendimus. Archelon was a giant sea turtle that lived during the age of the dinosaurs and shared seas with other massive marine reptiles. It was 4.6 meters, which is about 15 feet, making it the largest known turtle. Stupendimus, on the other hand, was a giant freshwater turtle that lived in South America 5 million years ago and had a carapace that was over 2.8 meters long, which is about 9 feet. This means that it was the largest known freshwater turtle, and it may have even been larger than Archelon. Today, the leatherback sea turtle is the largest of all living turtles and can grow up to 1.8 meters, that's nearly 6 feet, and weigh over 500 kilograms, which is over a thousand pounds. Its front flippers alone can be up to 2.7 meters, that's almost 9 feet. Yet, unlike other sea turtles, it does not have a hard bony shell. Instead, its carapace is covered in oily leather-like skin. Hence the name, Leatherback. Meanwhile, the Galapagos giant tortoise is the largest of all tortoises and can weigh up to 417 kilograms, which is over 900 pounds. But that's not the only record they hold. Giant tortoises are the oldest of all terrestrial vertebrates. They can easily reach 100 years old, but some captive specimens may exceed 200 years in age. Jonathan, a Seychelles giant tortoise, hatched from an egg in 1832 and is currently over 190 years old and still going. Another giant tortoise named Adwaita, I hope I pronounced that right, was reportedly 255 years old when he died. In fact, we have a hard time keeping track of these turtles' actual ages because they outlive their human caretakers. Yet, even smaller turtles can live for a long time. Tiny turtles that are kept as pets can easily live 30 years or more. 
Unfortunately, because pet turtles are such a long-term commitment, careless owners have been known to release them into the wild, and this has had some severe impacts on native species. The red-eared slider is the most popular turtle in the pet trade around the world, but as a result, it is also the most invasive species of turtle around the world. Native to the Midwestern United States, it is now found on every continent except Antarctica and has been displacing native species. If you go to your local park and see some turtles in the pond, there's a very good chance red-eared sliders are there. That said, red-eared sliders and other pond turtles are fascinating creatures. Male pond turtles have a unique way of attracting females. In the water, they perform a mating dance where they flutter their claws in front of the female turtle's head. If she's impressed, she'll allow the male to mate with her, and they'll both sink to the bottom. If she's not impressed, she may respond with aggression or indifference. By the end of the summer, breeding slows, and so do the turtles. For many species of turtles that have to endure winter, they become inactive once temperatures drop low enough, and they will brumate. Brumation is a process similar to hibernation, but there are a couple notable differences. One difference is that if temperatures briefly rise, turtles wake up and become active until temperatures fall again. So they won't stay asleep all winter like hibernating mammals. The other difference is downright miraculous. When turtles brumate, they don't need nearly as much oxygen as hibernating mammals. In fact, painted turtles can survive up to 170 days underwater without oxygen. This is due to three things. One, a lowered metabolic rate. Two, large glycogen stores in the liver. And three, lactic acid created in their shells and carbonate that's used to buffer it. Now other turtles can do this too, but they usually just do this by breathing through their butts. No, I'm serious. They have these air bladders back there that allow them to absorb oxygen from the water. It sounds fictional, but it's 100% true. And if you don't believe me, I encourage you to look it up. Speaking of breathing underwater, sea turtles surprisingly lack this ability. Unfortunately, they cannot breathe through their butts. They have to actually go to the surface and breathe. They can hold their breath for a while, but it depends on their activity levels. If they're swimming and foraging for food, they generally stay down for shorter periods, generally from 5 to 40 minutes. But if they're sleeping or conserving energy, they can stay underwater for 4 to 7 hours. Now, loggerhead sea turtles in the Mediterranean Sea have been recorded diving more than 10 hours. Meanwhile, Leatherback sea turtles, which, if you remember, are the largest of all turtles, can dive to over 1,250 meters, which is over 4,000 feet. That's the deepest dive of any reptile, and it rivals deep diving mammals such as the sperm whale. They can also travel extremely long distances. In the 2000s, a female leatherback traveled 20,558 kilometers from her nesting site in Indonesia to her feeding grounds in Oregon. The whole trip took 647 days. But let's go back to the surface. Out of the water, land-loving turtles have a different problem. In the deserts of North America, tortoises face extreme conditions day and night. Some species, such as the desert tortoise, spend most of their time in burrows and attain water from eating grasses, wildflowers, and cacti. Remarkably, they have large urinary bladders that can store 40% of their body weight in water, urea, uric acid, and nitrogenous wastes. This allows them to survive a year or more without access to water. Unfortunately, despite being such tough reptiles, turtles cannot compete with human development. Of the 360 species of turtles, 60% of them are threatened or extinct. As of 2021, turtle extinction is progressing faster than the KT event 66 million years ago. Now, if you know about this event, this is the one that killed the dinosaurs. So, it's quite telling that turtles survived the extinction of the dinosaurs, but they may not survive humanity. If we don't get it together soon, turtles will only exist in zoos and aquariums. We don't want that kind of future, okay? So I'm going to end this on a positive note, alright? Turtles are not gone yet. 
just because it says that they may be gone in a few centuries doesn't mean it's going to happen. So, let's get out there and do the best we can to save those dang turtles. If you like this video, please give it a like, leave a comment down below, and subscribe to Tidewater Teddy. Thanks, and have a great day.